J'espère que vous ne dormez pas. Well, I hope you're not sleeping. I'm not going to talk about beam. I'm going to talk about boom, an economic boom, and talk about how we were able to create an innovation zone in Montreal, which is unique to, in Canada. It's a zone for testing, experimenting, and we're all working together, and you are welcome to join. Uh, you can uh, propose projects and participate in this innovation. So let's see if this works. So I uh, just wanted to show you this slide first. Right now, Montreal is experiencing a fabulous economic boom in real estate, over $6 billion of investments currently downtown, over 120 cranes are, in currently, uh, are currently in downtown Montreal, 17,500 housing units have been built uh, recently in uh, our neighborhood, the Griffintown, the innovation neighborhood, and this is part of Griffintown here, with office towers as well. Montreal is extremely fortunate as compared to other North American cities, and that is that our downtown is livable. People live there, people eat there, people party there, people go out at night, people study there. Montreal is the number one university city in Canada with 120,000 students. This is very important. It's number two in North America after Boston, 230,000 students. And why am I mentioning this? It's because we want to keep talent here, and we want to not only give back to society, but also give back to the economic players and to our citizens. So as Sebastian was saying, we want to be a laboratory for urban experimentation of international caliber, and we want to do things that are unique in Canada. We're going to show you uh, we have the Internet of Things and we have other things that are accessible to everybody. Right now we have about five square kilometers. Here you see it on the screen. This is the map. And as I've mentioned, what's noteworthy is that we're downtown. So we can humanize. And this is very important for all of you who build uh, buildings and plants and factories. How can we humanize? How can we get people who are working and studying and living in these high rises or office towers? How can we get them to come down? And so you see the Lachine Canal here, which is at the bottom. Then Rene Levesque Boulevard, which is on the top. Atwater Market is in green and McGill. What's noteworthy here is that it was an industrial zone in the 19th century. And we're not talking about gentrification here. We're talking about uh, taking back industrial land that was then uh, redeveloped. And it's continuing to be developed. So here's part of what's coming around the Bell Center. Roughly $2.3 billion only in this portion of investment. You can see the Deloitte Tower, which is already up. You can see Rio Tinto and, De and Deloitte, or Deloitte, and then you see the Canadians Tower, uh, the tool number one and uh, number two there, and number three is just beginning to be built. And there's a whole consortium uh, next to that, which is going to be built and interconnected with tunnels so that they're connected to the rest of Montreal's underground city. This is just half of what you can see in the innovation corridor now. The challenge of all of this Right now, Cadillac Fairview is responsible for most of this project. The challenge is to see not only how we can build and then leave, but build and improve the quality of life and provide tools that don't exist anywhere else. So uh, at the heart of this creativity is our two universities, McGill and the École de Technologie Supérieure, who decided six years ago with this uh, this construction idea, daring, and they decided to, have to counterbalance it somehow and say, let's create an innovation quarter. We have $100 million in, of uh, R&D investment in this neighborhood. Let's see how we can help builders and uh, developers to use the strengths of the startups and the students to create something completely new. Since then, Concordia and UCLAM joined 
the innovation quarter. So we're talking about 150,000 of the 220,000 students and professors who are working and who are available to help create this sort of chaos from which we can have boundless creativity. So the innovation quarter that's best known in the world is which you probably know it, aside from Quebec, <laughs> if there are any here. Well, Silicon Valley, of course, 40 years ago. I would say that Montreal is, is you know, the last to hop on this bandwagon. And so we did some benchmarking, and we looked at Barcelona. Their uh, district just went bankrupt because it was all based on the city and politics and policies. What we did here, first of all, was to base it on the universities. We are not a university campus, and we don't want to be one. So the first very important element is this academic desire as compared to political desire. So we're making this a long-lasting project. The second theme is to think about quality of life. Right now, millennials, or all these people for, whom, you know, for all these people of you who are building buildings and apartments, they don't want an ecosystem within a company, as you can see in, let's say, video game companies, where you can come with your dog and your bike and you can take a shower on the job, but they want their neighborhood to be an ecosystem. And they no longer have the kind of loyalty we had in our generations, you know, the baby boomers. Now there's much more volatility. So now when you have new companies come in, last year there were 600 new workstations in the neighborhood. The CEOs of these companies want a, an inexpensive uh, office space, of course, but they also want a neighborhood that meets their employees' demands so they can retain their employees. So we worked and set up a third component of the innovation, which was working on four axes. It's not just about technology and, and, and industry. It's urban, yes. It affects you directly. It's in, with, involved in research and training. It's cultural and it's social. So for us, all of this means that we have to be able to work together. In Montreal, we have the entertainment district, which is well, world renowned. If you go there, it's to see a show. But what we wanted to do was say, if you're coming to the innovation quarter, we want to show you innovation in terms of builders, in terms of citizens, in terms of students. For everybody, we want to show that. I'll show you a few examples. We are a nonprofit. 40% of our budget comes from government, three levels of government. 60% comes from the private sector. So we have large companies who are members, and I'll show you a very large project that we set up with two of them, Ericsson Canada and Videotron. What we want to do is provide really a playground for innovation and see how, and you know this better than I do when you develop projects that are construction projects, sometimes the municipal machinery is very slow to move and requires all kinds of patience and patience and patience. I hope that we have no municipal employees here. Okay, just one. That's okay. Well, we love you, but, you know, it's a very slow-moving machinery compared to private innovation. And we'll see an example of this. So in the midst of all of this, we have 10 incubators. Montreal has about 2,500 startups. In the innovation quarter, we have between five and 600. So what's noteworthy here is that we have university incubators, private incubators, and semi-private incubators. And you can work directly in uh, home automation. Uh, I will tell you an interesting anecdote, which could be of use to you. We have a startup that found a way of uh, making light, which is 99.9% .9 from sunlight, from sunshine. And they said, we'll put it in museums. So imagine museums that have no windows, and it could be amazing. Well, in Montreal, we have a biodome, which is lovely, and it's actually under repair, and we have penguins there, and they were depressed because of the artificial light. But with that, they worked to see how they could work on this. Second stage is to see with my employees whether it's possible to have them be less depressed and more productive, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a different project, no. But uh, so these young people, they're they're working up north in the far north, and uh, they're capable of setting up the same light, 
and create greenhouses with 30% more growth. They are reducing uh, their uh, hydro bills. And we have a mayor from Saint-Lazare in France, which is the biggest boat uh, center of boat building in France. What's his idea? He's thinking, my God, we're building boats and we're in the dark forever. Let's get this lighting inside. So this is a small company with students working in it, and there are dozens of them. I think I have the best job in Montreal and the most highly motivating job because I'm working with young, creative people. And the idea is to see how we can work with people like you to try to build things that are absolutely extraordinary. Let's look at some concrete projects. We were fortunate enough a year ago to set up the first uh, smart city open air uh, lab in 5G and the purpose is that it's 100% the goal is it's 100% pri private with Ericsson Canada and Videotron and ETS the Ecole de Technologie Supérieure and the Innovation Quarter so before showing you a very short two minute video I'd like to explain the goal of all of this Ericsson Canada has just set up new infrastructure which doesn't exist anywhere else in Canada and they've set it up in this neighborhood. Videotron is setting up a, a 5G cable system that doesn't exist anywhere. Our phones right now are 3G. So these companies are using this district to test out their projects. And so we opened up to all companies and universities who are members something very important to all citizens we opened up the opportunity to uh, file a project. So you can go to our site, uh, lavie.ca, and you can table a project, and you could be chosen, in which case you could use these facilities as your playground, working, of course, with uh, La Vie Intelligente, our partners. But you can have this unique infrastructure. It is absolutely unique. And what's interesting is that we're talking about data management, we have cities such as Toronto, and we were visited by some senior officials from Development Canada who were concerned about seeing in Toronto the possibility of having one company who I will not name, but who's called Google, oops, didn't mean to name them, but a foreign company who could come in with $5 million and develop something on the waterfront and could then leave with all their data. And then they could just you know, wipe their hands and walk away. Whereas what we've set up here it was very difficult for the uh, dozens of engineers I worked with. Well, are there a lot of engineers here? Okay, always the same people, okay. Anyhow, it was very tough when you're working in open innovation to manage data. So for every project presented, right now we have 20, we have a possibility to manage data according to the actual project. So I'm going to show you a quick video, and then I'd like to tell you about a few examples and see whether uh, this can all work for you. Okay, can the video, can we get the video rolling? The project is about creating the largest open air laboratory in Canada. Ericsson brings our technology leadership, our global knowledge of the evolution towards smart cities, and we bring, most importantly, our people who are very passionate about this project. Le quartier Innovation, c'est une zone de vie au centre-ville de Montréal dans laquelle nous essayons de réunir des universités, des citoyens, le secteur privé, des start-up et travailler sur l'innovation. Nous voulons vraiment faire un laboratoire d'expérimentation urbaine de calibre international. Vidéotron amène dans le projet plusieurs choses. Évidemment, un réseau à la fine pointe de, de la technologie, le savoir-faire derrière ce réseau-là, et finalement, la relation privilégiée qu'on a avec nos clients, duquel on veut obtenir le feedback pour modeler à leurs besoins les services de prochaine génération. Notre contribution dans le projet est de deux niveaux. Premièrement, la pépinière de savoir, de talent que nous allons mettre dans le projet, que ce soit nos professeurs, nos chercheurs et aussi nos étudiants. L'autre contribution, c'est d'utiliser notre campus comme un lieu d'expérimentation. Ce qui est intéressant dans le quartier innovation, c'est qu'on y dort, on y travaille, on y fait la fête, on y boit, on y mange. Donc c'est vraiment une zone de vie, on ne parle pas de zone commerciale ou de zone industrielle. Immediately it brings the benefit of providing a playground for entrepreneurs and higher education to express themselves, learn the technology, prepare themselves for both today's world but for the future world. 
on va être les premiers dans le monde à développer une nouvelle expertise pour des applications du futur. C'est vraiment des services qui vont venir enrichir la façon dont on vit. Et c'est pour ça qu'on a dit que c'est un laboratoire pour l'élaboration de la vie intelligente. So you're all invited if you'd like to come and develop a project and have engineering support. Now, one thing that's very important, for this kind of project, you're not doing it with the uh, VP of Innovation. You have to deal with the president of the company, Manon Bouillette and Gamas and presidents of uh, Videotron and Ericsson Canada, respectively. They sit down every month, and we look at how we can do things to, let's say, not have, let's say, a gas plant that isn't going to work, but really concrete things. We look at facial recognition experiments, i5, for example, Wi-Fi based on light. We're going to install this in the Arsenal. And PicoCell, these are captors that give you, sensors that give you 5G where it's normally inaccessible. Ericsson is developing sensors for COP20. It's a world project. And these are sensors to verify air quality. There are currently 20 projects that have been presented and we're in the selection process. And for citizens, since they don't obviously have, often have the skills, the projects accepted will be supported with engineers if they're accepted. Now, a total change in subjects. We have an innovation boutique. Cadillac Fairview and Devimco's who are building and selling are working with us. We set up an innovation boutique. So we're helping our Montreal startups to create something. It has nothing to do with building, but they're human beings who are living and buying the apartments uh, that are built and who come to work in these neighborhoods. So what we want to do is include them in the innovation and see how we can do this. So I have a few products. I'd like to show them to you. I brought uh, something here. Is, are any of you parents? We have a few parents, one engineer and one civil servant. Great. You see this pair of pajamas? This uh, pajama top is a smart pajama top. When you're tired at night, and when you've got somebody who talks like me and doesn't stop, and you want to go home because you're tired and your kids are waiting for you, you have a sticker here that will be able to tell a story. There are 10 different stories. You can just put your cell phone there, and you'll have 10 different stories. That's made in Quebec. Here you have a project, a wonderful project. It's already being marketed by Google. It's Smart Ado. It's a GPS for your bike. It has an alarm, fitness, light, navigation. So you don't need to put your phone on your bike. There's a color code here. Once you program it, you can be pedaling your bike in the city and know if you should be turning left the light will come on, the green light will be on the left. This is my little publicity, but you know, these are all young people, we've got to support them. And this is terrific. These are bars, energy bars, with cricket powder. Three young people, triathletes, decided to make these. Is it cricket? And so we have two buildings that are built now, and we're humanizing them with the innovations. So we created an index. For example, let's say you want to see which startups are dealing with robotics in your neighborhood. Last year, we had a lighter technology competition with Lighter 360. We had a little truck or a van, and we did what Google does with its photos. So it was three-dimensional, and we digitized the neighborhood, and we opened up a contest for students and uh, companies who were interested. So you have that index here, and so you can see what's happening. Then we have uh, the Espace Fabrique space, first construction in Canada. You're, let's say you're a small business, and you can't make a prototype. Well, this is a co-op. Instead of going to the gym where you have a trainer, here you have a, an engineer who's going to support you and you're going to be with 20 digital and, and uh, laser machines. They can have, you can make your prototypes, they can be laser driven, etc. It's a fabulous place. 
and it's available seven days a week in the neighborhood. There are six in the U.S., and the first one has just opened in Montreal. Then there's some new projects. Montreal has decided to recover empty buildings in Montreal. And the first one is the Young Project in the neighborhood. So we've just opened up the social innovation facility in Montreal, and we can also host some startups in these premises. So these are some very interesting projects. We're talking about Montreal Icons, the former planetarium in Montreal, which is currently being renovated. It's a $15 million project, and it's going to become the first engineering incubator in Canada. It's over $15 million investment. The challenge with the investment is that it was dark, obviously, to be stargazing and see planets. Uh, so we, and because it's heritage, we have to keep that sort of image and architecture. It's uh, slated to be open by year end, and it's going to become an engineering incubator, and you should visit it. It's tremendous. Then we have the Tour des Guillages, the switching tower. The Lachin Canal was built in the 1820s. Uh, you know, think of, it was to replace Chicago when Chicago burnt. So we have this tower that's in terrible condition. The Lachine Canal is between 800,000 to a million people go through it every year, running or tourists or, or biking or walking. And so again, at, by year end, we're going to be creating the first uh, urbanity center. So again, we want to bring people from the universities and the neighborhood and have not just a public space, but we want to feed it with some cre creativity from our millennials and our baby booners and our Generation Xers to make it more human and to take a place, as you can see, that's absolutely run down now and make it back. And that project's been accepted. Then on my last building here is the piscine, the swimming pool, the Roger building, which was bought by Georges Coulomb and which is going to become an incubator in the creativity industry. And from this location, we are going to be able to get back the plans from the 1890s. All the windows are going to be replaced with big windows. There's going to be a large windows at the ground level. About 50 years ago, they were supposed to be there, and our innovation boutique is going to be there in October. And this building was saved recently because the electric train, the quick train, is going to run just behind it. There's the bridge there. And they were able to move the rails 15 meters to avoid destroying this building. The purpose of all of this is to maintain the architecture and see how we can improve it by opening it up not only to young people, but also by uh, making it a showcase for creativity. I still have a minute and 48 seconds to tell you that uh, I finished, but also uh, to tell you that if you'd like to participate in our Smart Life Lab, you're the most welcome. You can go onto our website and uh, send in a project, and I'd be very happy to answer any questions you may have. And I hope you have an excellent evening, and thank you again.